Hey guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at some emulation performance on the Xiaomi Redmi Note 8 Pro. I recently did a full review video on this phone and I'll leave a link in the description, but overall this is one of my favorite smartphones of 2019, mainly because of the price and performance. Now this thing comes in at $199. If you're in the US, you can pick one up for about $214 on Amazon. And it's powered by the all-new MediaTek Helio G90T. This is a 12 nanometer CPU. It's octa-core, two big cores at 2.05 gigahertz, six smaller cores at 2 gigahertz. The GPU is a Mali G76 MC4 and six gigabytes of LPDDR4X RAM. There are a couple other variants floating around. You can get one of these with eight gigs of RAM, but I figured six was more than enough for this smartphone. It's also running Android 9, and they do plan on updating this to Android 10 when it's available. Bluetooth 5.0, and dual band AC Wi-Fi. I will leave the full spec list in the description, but this video is all about emulation on this device. I'm gonna go through and test some N64, some PSP, some Sega Saturn, some Dreamcast, some PS2, and even some GameCube using the Dolphin emulator. I will be using my Xbox One S controller connected over Bluetooth to play all of these games. And with each one of these tests, I will have the system name, emulator name, and game box are on screen so you know what's going on at any given time. So let's go ahead and get right into it. First up, we have some N64 emulation. As you can see, I have the system name, box art, and the emulator used. Plus, if I've changed the resolution at all for upscaling, I will list it here. We're using Mupin64 plus FZ from the Google Play Store. This is Conker's Bad Fur Day, and I'm upscaled to 960 by 720. N64 performance on the MediaTek G90T is absolutely amazing. I probably could have went a little higher with the upscaling, but I think 960 by 720 looks great on this screen. And I know it's a little harder to see with this emulator, but I do have the FPS listed in the middle of the screen, and I'm going to try to do this with every single emulator that I test. So I got a few more games to test here with N64. I'll be right back when we move over to our next emulator, which is Sega Saturn. Okay, so here we have some Sega Saturn emulation using the Yobase and Shiro core inside of RetroArch. I'm not a big fan of this core. I really wish these phones were powerful enough to use the Beetle core because this isn't that accurate and there's lots of graphical glitches. But overall, this chipset does handle Sega Saturn with this core.
The G90T SoC also handles Dreamcast really well. I'm using the Redream emulator from the Google Play Store, and I'm upscaled to 1920 by 1440 with each one of these games you're going to see here. FPS is listed in the top left-hand corner, and I'm getting a constant 60 with everything that I tested. PSP is another one that runs really well on this device. I'm using PPSSPP at 3x resolution with the Vulkan back end. There was a couple games that I had to drop it down to 2x, and you'll see it change here in just a second. Like God of War Chains of Olympus, God of War Ghosts of Sparta, Killzone, and Midnight Club. When it comes to PS2 emulation on Android, it's not great. It really doesn't matter if you're using a $1,200 phone or a $200 phone like this. There are two choices we have. The Play emulator, we can use the core inside of RetroArch, or you could use the standalone Daemon PS2 emulator from the Google Play Store. Both of these are under heavy development and, like I mentioned, it doesn't matter if you're on a $1,200 phone or not with a Snapdragon 855 Plus, you're still going to have trouble running PS2 on Android. But either way, I'm sure I'll have people asking about it. So here's an easier one. This is Marvel vs. Capcom 2, the PS2 version. If you want to play this game, I recommend using the Dreamcast version. I also tried a couple more using Damon PS2 Pro, and I just kept getting crashes, so we're going to kind of skip this one on this video. One, one. 
And finally, some GameCube games using the Dolphin emulator. For a majority of these games, I use the Vulcan back end, except for the first one here, Super Mario Sunshine. For some reason, the Vulcan performance wasn't as good as OpenGL. But overall, I think it handles GameCube emulation quite well. This is the best MediaTek chip that I've ever tested, and hopefully they do more of this, because I really do love this G90T chip. This is definitely not on par with the Snapdragon 855 when it comes to GameCube emulation, but I think it's holding its own for such a cheap smartphone. At 200 bucks, it's really hard to beat unless you buy used. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. Like I mentioned, I mean, it's definitely not on par with the Snapdragon 855, but I've never been able to find a $200 855 smartphone brand new. Of course, you can always search Craigslist or eBay and pick up something maybe with a bad ESN or a little crack in the screen, but I'm personally really digging what MediaTek has done here with the new G90T. If you want to check out some more performance with native Android games and a few different emulators, I have that full review video. I'll leave a link in the description. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.